Hello, my beautiful babies. Welcome to the reading. So, for this reading, since, since the topic of the reading is crisis, I chose the tower cards from different decks. So, uh, pile one, pile two, three, and four. So, choose your pile <laughs> and see you at your reading. Okay, pile one. This is the tarot card from the deck that is inspired from the Game of Thrones series. And I think this is my favorite tarot deck. <laughs> so, um, we're gonna get into the reading. I uh, put the the cards back into the deck and I'm shuffling so um we're gonna see what the message is here for you so I'm gonna let it a bit open like I'm gonna let the, the reading a bit open I'm not gonna specifically ask questions so we already have some cards <laughs> okay so the first card that fell uh, is the page of swords and I'm not gonna read this card as uh, as per the page of swords in zero but like I, I feel like the message here is more like the message of what this image represents because in the Game of Thrones universe when uh, and actually, if you think about it, this is quite related to a crisis moment. Because when uh, Daenerys was ruling over Marine, the city of Marine, and uh, its sister cities, the people of the place were not satisfied with her rule and her new rules. So a riot happened. So... It was quite um quite surprising because everyone thought something of this secret organization, secret group that started the riot, but it proved out to be something entirely different in the end, because everyone associated them with the rich people, but in the end it just seemed like they were not necessarily th this thing was not orchestrated by the rich people in the city. This was entirely something else but I feel like I need some more context here because at this point this card doesn't really give me a specific message but I feel like it's quite relevant in some context so the page of swords basically talks about a new beginning it's a change in terms of your mind so what this whole crisis could bring to you is a change in terms of how you think and how you take initiative in terms of your ideas manifesting your ideas and I hear the word mutiny but it's a lot about your mind your ideas for some of you even your principles of some sorts okay we've got the king of coins And the nine of spears and the star okay so I feel like you've been betrayed somehow betrayed by someone very dear to you and you weren't expecting a betrayal from them and it's like they got away with a lot of information about you information that they can use they can use exactly like this guy like the sword here they can use that to cut you and i keep hearing the word mutiny so this crisis for you may be a lot about people it's not just events i mean it's not something like necessarily just the money crisis or um uh, 
emotional crisis it's a lot about the people around you and someone very dear to you someone for some of you it could be a childhood sweetheart or a childhood friend or if it's not a childhood friend it's like something a childhood from high school or something like that someone very close to you that betrayed you in a in a very weird way i i feel like i feel like this whole thing happened because of a misunderstanding because i feel like this person has their own justice like their own sense of justice and you do too so i, I feel like in your own like in both of your views each one of you is right and this is what started the the conflict and this is why you felt so betrayed by this person but it, it feels like you were just left in the cold it feels like it, it's very harsh it was it was a very harsh cut of of your relationship and your closeness and it's like they just ran away afterwards it's like they themselves cut your connection so with this card at first i was ready to say that this is what you're gonna be uh, what sorry who you're gonna be in the end but now i'm being called to say that this is who's gonna help you instead so this whole this person started the chaos in your life so when i say that in your minds both of you are right i'm not saying that listen they are right it, it's not that they are right from an objective point of view it's just that both of you are right in your own perceptions of how things went and uh i feel like this person in their mind has total justice to do what they did what they caused to you and i feel like they caused something that's quite a big deal it really shattered your world it really shook up things but so now i feel that the the, the message of this is who you're gonna be in the end but also this is who's helping you so a person who's quite stable a person who's older than both of you a person who sees things from a different perspective because here i feel like it was a clash of opinions a clash of views a clash of ideas a clash of the mental world but this person is a bit more detached from the from both of you and this person seems to see things in a way that none of you does and this person had nothing to do with this whole chaos but it could be that you're related to them so it's not necessarily like blood related related one way or another and um feel like they're helping you they're helping you slowly steadily they're also helping you with advice so turn into who you think this person might be and lean your ear a bit to what they have to say and also i feel like they're helping you with granting you some shelter some kind of i heard the responsibility so um they may give you something to do they may give you some shelter some stability but i also heard responsibility so maybe it's because this person sees you as the more responsible one in this whole situation and that's why they want to help you and it's like i heard the word prove so it's like they want to prove to you something but it could also be that they want to prove to others what went wrong and why so um yeah this person exactly because they are um older they see things from a different perspective and and, and they're just more experienced and they it's like they know 
either this person, either this person's type. So they know how to go around this whole situation. And um, I feel like this person could also be very well managing this other person's behavior. Like if they meet, this person could very well uh, fool this other person. Okay. Nine of Spears. Okay, so I feel like this is quite intense for you. Obviously, it's a crisis. So it's a. Uh... I'm getting something like this. This person wanted to go away with this, to get away with this unseen, like, and um, like. To not be questioned. So it could be for some of you that you might have been questioning them in regards to something. Or what they did later on is quite questionable. But they just wanted to get away with it. And um, it caused a clash. Like, I see here two sides. Two sides of people, some on your side, some on their own side. And it's like, it's like a very intense conflict. Because it's, because uh, it's like two groups with very strong characteristics. So each group has their own traits that they don't want to give up on. So, <sighs> it's a bit harder to explain, but I think you know what I mean. So, basically, it's the question of not wanting to change, even for the bad. So, I feel like for some of you, this could be in the workplace. Because the thing with the workplace comes through a lot. But it doesn't have to be. But I just feel like for the vast majority, it, it is the workspace. So, uh, there's, a, there's quite a clash here of, I heard, environments. So, it could be, like, let's say you're working on a project. And you're basically one theme, but there, there are people of one kind and people of another kind in this team and it's like there are two teams within the bigger team and each one of them wants the work environment to be a certain way so let's say you're in a workplace where half of the employers are narcissists and the other half are healthy people mentally healthy people so obviously, those who are mentally sane will ask the narcissists to, you know, act a bit more responsibly, act a bit less shitty, act a bit more, you know, with integrity. But because narcissists never know those things, they are just entitled in their own view of the world, in their own ideas, so they don't want to change. They are very rigid. So... Here is the thing, because I see here a conflict of very rigid opinions. It's a thing of how... So, I was giving this example of the two sides of a workplace. Like, let's say half of the employers there want a narcissistic work environment, where people are just fake, and they just pretend, and they just climb on one another's back for success. And they would just put the other person down with the first chance. While the other side is a more virtuous side, a more mentally sane side. And you just want to work as a healthy team, healthy human beings together, valuing one another. But this is totally foreign for the narcissists. So you're a threat to them, to, the, to their world. And that's why they they don't want to change. So 
So this could be a, a, the case in itself, but um, it could also be different. It could also be a slightly different scenario, but quite similar at the same time. So uh, yeah, I see it's basically two groups of people clashing with one another. And it's just creating such a nasty conflict and it's like the other side it's uh it's more numerous you know there are more people there but at the same time i feel like this person this person is someone with authority and someone in charge and someone with influence maybe this person is not from the same environment but this person can change things drastically for you. So just lean into to the comfort this person has to provide for you. I feel like this is your shelter. This is your companion. This is who's going to protect you throughout all of this. And uh, it's like somewhat you feel stuck in this. You feel like you're in a prison with this. And you're just giving signals to the universe to help you with this like blink blink help me please and it's like it's taking so long it's taking too long far too long and for some of you i'm hearing this is not the first time this is not the first instance you're going through this some of you have been going through similar scenarios for a very long time already and it just feels crushing and it feels burdening for you. And it's like, for how long? For how long do I have to keep tolerating this? For how long do I have to keep suffering this whole thing and going through this whole thing? So, yeah, um, it's tough. But the star card is also a card about hope, a card that foretells success. So, Yes, it's taking a long time, but don't give up. And most of all, don't give up on yourself and your standards and the things you believe in. Now, this is not something I necessarily see in the cards. This is more of a personal advice. If you are in a toxic environment at work, leave it. Yes, you may love the job. It may be very financially rewarding, but to what cost? But then again, I don't know your specific situation, so it's just like a general advice. So you can try to look for better options. <sighs> yeah, so... Um, It's uh, with the star card, as I said, it foretells success, it foretells victory, it foretells the shining of light in the end, but it's just gonna take some time. Now, why is this happening? Why, what is the highest reason for this? So we've got the Ten of Cups. What I see here in this card with all of these candles, it's um, the message of souls coming together, the right group of people coming together, like-minded people coming together. The star is also associated to Aquarius, and Aquarius is all about like-minded people, groups of like-minded people coming together. So... I feel like you are, I was about to say by the end of this, but for some of you, it could be throughout this crisis, you're gonna meet the right people for you. And it's not just one person, right? Your whole soul family coming together, the right people in your life. So maybe this whole crisis for you is here to teach you how to say no and how to put your boundaries in 
like how to how to make others respect your boundaries and how to move away from toxic situations now at some point i understand you can't really really move away immediately but sometimes the toughest of scenarios happen for us to tell us this is not the right place for you anymore go fly <laughs> now at the same time some other scenarios can unfold like something like a cage something that we want to get out of but we can't because of certain reasons certain blockages it may happen so in such a context the the highest call is for you to become resilient for you to be stronger within to regain your power and keep fighting in the toughest of situations and by the end of this whole crisis you will say for fuck's sake i can't believe i i've been through this and i've done it okay <laughs> so it's a uh, for some of you as i said it's throughout this whole time for some of you is by the end of this time and for some of you it's a bit sadder uh for some of you it's later it, like so this whole crisis is gonna be over but what you reap out of it the the kind of person you're gonna be by the end of this with a little bit more patience gonna you're gonna attract the right people for you so this depends on how fast things manifest for each one of you individually and uh then again what kind of energies you have in your birth chart what kind of ease or blockages you have in attracting the right people for you because like it or not the birth chart has a lot to say about this as well so this has been the reading for you it's um yeah keep this in mind basically keep your eyes on the prize so um again be resilient i love you hello group two welcome to the reading you are attracted to the tower card from the cold uh sorry the deck called after tarot and uh i picked this deck for this type of reading because it's called after tarot so it kind of makes me think think about consequences so uh i put the card back in the deck and uh i'm shuffling right now so uh okay a card fell and i was about to, say, to ask what is this crisis about and this card like fell as i was thinking the question so okay we've got the three of cups And it's interesting because the Three of Cups is not a sad card, it's not a conflictual card, it's a card of people coming together and celebrating. So, um... I need a clarification. You've also got the Lovers. This is a bit, uh... okay, I'm going to pull more cards because okay, so bottom of the deck energy it's the ace of pentacles but it's like the bottom of the deck energy i'm gonna read it at the end so i pulled three more cards 
They are the King of Swords. The Queen of Swords. And the Knight of Swords. So... Uh, with the King and Queen of Swords here, it's like... They're basically two people who could be on the same page, but they could also not be on the same page, like entirely not on the same page. <sighs> and it's quite hard to read it, like... Okay, so with the lovers, the lovers is a card of choices. It's a What's happening here? So this is this is a crisis that it's it's secretive by itself. I'm not even I can't even read it properly. Okay, so I keep coming back to this Three of Cups, but it's just silent. It's very silent to me. Because I'm trying to read it intuitively, but nothing comes through. So it's just weird. And it's, um, it could be that. There are just some people so secretive and so good at what they're doing that they're basically masking their tracks so well. They can't be seen, they can't be traced, they can't be told. So... this or this could be so for some of you there are three or more people coming together to basically plot your downfall and there's they celebrate Listen, they celebrate whenever you fall down, whenever you're going through stuff, but they pretend to be your friends. But they, they are not. And... Okay, what I'm gonna say next may not apply to everyone. There's one person here that you clearly see as your enemy, as someone who just doesn't like you, you don't like someone that causes a lot of hurt for you, a lot of obstacles, blockages, whatever. And there are two other people who seem to be on your side, but they're not. They're actually in cahoots with this other person. They're basically stabbing your back and celebrating about it. Okay, this could be the message for some of you. For some others, it could be that this card talks about a crisis of friendship, a crisis of people coming together, a crisis of you not being able to share your joy with the people you love. Or you not even having any joy at all because you're not with the people you love. You're, you haven't experienced something like this in a very long time. And it's training you. 
okay so this may be for some but then again there's also this card and it's a card of choices and it's called the lovers so for for some of you this could be a love crisis an emotional crisis listen an advice is coming through for you so it's like you're going through some bad stuff in this area of your life so maybe your significant other is just it's not there or it's hurting you or you're too far apart or just something bad happening that's hurting you I got it now. I got it. So basically, traditionally, this card was depicted as a man and two women. And the man was supposed to choose between those two women. That's why it was called the choice. This card was traditionally called the choice. Now it's called the lovers. And it's depicted like this. With two people a man and a woman loving one another so the scenario i'm getting is that i'll use the example of the feminine here but apply it for your own case if you're a guy apply it for your own case okay so you could be the girl here going through some turmoil here with your love and the angel of your relationship here is with a sword in their hand it feels like it's stinging you it feels like there's something cutting deep inside of you in this area of your life now there's a third party here this woman in red i see it as the third party i see her as the third party and you may be confessing about the turmoil you're going through in the relationship you may be talking about it to these two people and then these two people just go and spill the beans to this other person who's the third party and Okay, listen, uh, at some point a friend of mine did a reading for me and in that reading this card came out and she felt it like there were three women dancing and enjoying themselves whenever something bad happens for me. And ever since then I, whenever I see this card, I remember that, but I detach from the readings as to not read it like that. But it seems that in this case, it may be similar, it may be that case. Because uh, I feel like there's some magic here. Some, And if it's not magic, if they're not literally placing magic like if, if this third person is not literally placing magic on this guy then they're just plotting they're just because remember what i said in the beginning it's so secretive it's so well thought of and they're just covering their tracks so well that this whole thing didn't want to come through at the beginning so be very mindful and the advice that was coming through is this as hard as it may be stop talking about your turmoil to your friends for a while 
just stop talking about it. Talk about other stuff. Talk about, I don't know, talk about the kind of movie you you saw lately. Talk about the series you like. Talk about, um, I don't know, talk about how you like playing chess or you get my point. Things that are not necessarily personal experiences. Talk about, I don't know, Louis the Thirteenth. Talk about Henry the Eighth. Talk about history stuff. Talk about how the USA became a nation. Talk about the Roman Empire. <laughs> stuff like that. Talk about things that are as as non-personal as they can be. Talk about like history is the best example or just science stuff like that <sighs> things that happened without an immediate effect on your life and try to keep an open eye for those people who will deliberately question like they will deliberately ask they would keep asking you questions about how this this thing has been going on in your life and if you pay enough attention you can actually see the dissatisfaction in their vibe in their eyes hear it in their voice if you refuse to go that way just cut that type of conversation and see how they behave and that way you can spot them you can see which two which these two people are and I feel like one of them is a bit more uh, secluded I actually heard a very weird word, but I think it's like a combination of two words, like seclusive. Okay. <laughs> so, um, it's like, okay, it doesn't necessarily have to be for all of you, but it's like there's a blonde woman and a brunette woman. And the blonde woman, I feel like she's shorter, and she's that kind of person that is always dressing office, the elegant type of office, and a little bit vintage. But she's just very shy. She seems to be very shy and very quiet around people. And she just lets other people spill the beans, you know? Because she gives this impression of someone so tolerant. And again, I heard the word secretive. Someone so secretive that... People wouldn't think that she would just go about and talk about them because she doesn't talk about no one that much. But when she really goes around with, with the people who really know the real her, you know, she spills the tea. So, uh, this is someone more like, more like a Capricorn or a Taurus. I'm getting Earth vibes here. So, she could be a Capricorn, a Taurus, a Virgo. I feel like the Virgo one is particularly strong. And this, this Virgo person really has Scorpio influences a lot. Because it, it's like, there's a lot of... She's very mean. So it's the, the, the shadow aspects of both Virgo and, and Scorpio. She's on the low, but she has this image about her as someone who is very professional. She could be a secretary. Um, or just having this attitude of someone who, sh who looks like a secretary. Remember what I said about that elegant office type of outfit? So she could be often seen with that kind of office skirts and some kind of heels that are not too extravagant and you know uh, those kind of office shirts that go well with a skirt and she seems always put together and uh, 
not talking too much, being a bit shy, like that. And uh, I see someone blonde, and, and even her clothes are, you know, in earthy colors. So this is kind of it. And, and for most of you, she actually really has an office job. And um, this other person, this other person here, is someone who's very alive, very joyous, very, like, very, someone who jokes a lot, someone who, <sighs> I'm hearing Gemini, so um, she could have this attitude of someone who's very joyous and very lighthearted, and very, and, and I feel like this person is someone you've known for a long time and you really consider someone, like, you really consider them to be close to you. Like, this other person, the office type of person, is someone you met more recently and is someone you might have actually met at your job and she inspired this kind of trust in you. Or it could be that, actually, because... What I'm getting is that for most of you, these two people seem like they don't know each other. Something like that. Seem like they don't... They're not friends with one another. That, that's how they seem like to you. So, for some of you, it could be the case. And maybe they really are not friends with one another, but just that this third party is connected to both of them. Or... They're just straight up lying to you and they really are good friends. But I feel like if they, like, I feel like if that's the case, you can see it. Like, it's it's not necessarily them lying to you because you, you, you can see it. <sighs> okay, so this other person is um someone who has pretended to be on your side for quite a long time already and it's for some of you <laughs> no it's not just for some like this person was fake from the beginning it's just how they go about. So, um, yeah, they're basically networking this whole thing. Like, and it's, it's like the only reason this third party hangs around with them is strictly because they spill the tea on you. Otherwise, they would not be valuable to this third party. So, um, watch out. Be on the watch out. And uh, my nose is itching. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it could also be that you kind of have to cut some communication with this significant other of yours. It seems like for you, it's a relationship crisis. Listen. This may not be for, for all of you, okay? Take this as it resonates. But, so, so some of you could really want to be with this person but for some of you it could be the opposite some of you want to just like some of you know that this is not the case for you and you want to get out of this relationship but you're not sure yet like it's it's a bit toxic it's a bit not right it's not it's not balanced it's not a good give and take, it's not, it's not okay, basically. So, 
you've been weighing things, you might have already taken the decision or not, the decision of breaking up. So, for those of you, just split. And because what I see here is that this person is at a point where they kind of have to choose between you and that third party. Don't make them choose because they will never choose. They will keep you in limbo. They will keep both of you in the limbo. And that's why this other party wants spies on you. But basically, he's undecided. So, for those of you, you know, if your partner is immature and toxic and just incapable and just not serious enough and not committed enough, just go away. You don't even have to explain yourself. Just go away and let this person be with this third party because it's what they deserve. So basically, my message is here it is the following. If they are unable to choose you by their own free will, walk away, be the queen or the king, and at that point, they will only be left with a third party. And this person will treat them so horribly that this will turn out into a crisis for them so by the end of it they will realize they should have chosen you but but by that time you're already gone so walk away walk away walk away fast and don't look back just walk away so basically cut communication with all of the people involved in this that would be the reading <laughs> For those of you who really want to be with this person, let me get another card. This is fantastic. So you've got the Page of Swords. <laughs> so Follow your heart. Feel like you have a purpose. Feel like you have a calling. Follow your heart. And your heart. And if this person cannot follow you there, they're not the person for you. If they are the person for you, if they really are your one, they would come back to you. But don't wait don't wait for anyone don't be a little doggy at their feet okay because this is not attractive stand in your power walk away if they cannot cho cannot choose you walk away show them your standards show them that you choose yourself that's it you believe in your goals you believe in your passions in your talents in your greatness that's all you have to do. And if they are the right person, they will come for you. <laughs> like, like, they will come for you with backup. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, be strong, be powerful. Just listen to your dreams. Follow your dreams, most important, importantly. Because your dreams will never betray you. Your dreams will never cheat on you your dreams will never you know cause you this kind of thing so okay so for some of you it could actually even be the case that the moment you walk away and you disappear from their life for 
a few weeks or a month or two months <laughs> but not that long actually not that long of a time they will actually realize whom they should have chosen for some of you if this is the right person for you and they are just too dumb at the moment make them choose if they cannot choose make them choose and the way to do that is like this and then just focus on you on your beliefs on your standards on your love for yourself and your dreams just do that and that's the biggest middle finger you can give to them <laughs> So I love you, my babies. And the bottom of the car, uh, bottom of the deck energy, was the Ace of Pentacles. Now the Ace of Pentacles, the Aces are the most powerful omens of change in Tarot, and the Ace of Pentacles promises material change. So just go. Where is it? Where is it? Just go this way. Of following your dreams, following your path, your career, and this will meet you. Keep your eyes on the prize. <laughs> I love you. Be the bee. Hello, my beloved babies. Welcome to the reading. So, you were attracted to this tower card, and it is from the tarot deck called. The Light Vision Stero. I'll be putting the card back in the deck and shuffling. And uh, let's see what's coming through for you. Okay. So we already have two cards. It's Knight of Chalices which is the Knight of Cups and the Eight of Pentacles okay so uh, this should give me an insight into what this crisis is about for you so immediately with the Eight of Pentacles I I feel like it's something about money, something about manifestation, something... Oh, I heard tolerance. Okay, we'll see how that fits in in the reading. So, it's... um The Eight of Pentacles is uh, the card of someone who walks... Uh, sorry, works diligently on on what they have to achieve. They, it's a card of work, but someone who keeps working and just keeps working and keeps working and is very focused on their work. Someone who... Okay, let me... Let me see here. Okay, so... The Knight of Chalices. The Knight of Chalices talks a lot about emotions because it's the water element. And see the way the guy is up on that thing and it's... I feel like you may be emotionally challenged at this point and it could be that you find shelter in your work but for some of you it could be that your work is also crumbling in a way or another feels like either you have too many options and you don't know what to choose either it feels like your options are fading out so uh, it's like your emotional life is a total chaos and you don't know what to choose and it's like it's 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 like Things of the past keep coming through, whether it's the past of this life, or the past of other lives, or birth. And uh, it's like, it's something that keeps coming in loops. And it, it just happens in loops. And it's like, 
you're on top of it and you don't know how to deal with it you don't know what to do about it you don't know how this goes and where it will lead you you don't know how it's ending you don't know if it's falling you don't know what the fuck is going on but somehow i feel like you're going with it so it's it's like you're on a roller coaster but so in in a certain way you're not enjoying it but from a certain point onwards you're like going with it just going just vibing with it so if you're not already there the fact that i got this message is, is the omen for you to know that there will be a click point i heard a clash point and after that you may be just going with the flow just like it feels like it's feels like it's directly pushing you pushing and pulling you so it's like the whole external situations are pushing you towards this and your own internal world is pulling you towards this and it feels like there's a clash so it could be a clash with your significant other if it's romantic or just apply it to your circumstances but i feel like it's emotional it's primarily an emotional crisis where you're not really making sense of your emotional world at this point and it feels like there needs to be this clash of emotions so it could be your emotions and someone else's emotions coming through so you may need to talk about this and it will be kind of like a clash but a burst at the same time so you will just bump heads but at the same time just pour all your love and frustrations onto another because it might have been the case that you both caused frustrations for one another but afterwards after you have that conversation and that clash it feels like there's a lot of things bottled up and with that clash they're gonna explode and they're gonna be set free for both of you and afterwards things are gonna be so much clearer because you're gonna see where the other person stands because at this point it may not be clear for any of you you may just have no idea what is going on none of you so um i feel like afterwards it's gonna be very clear for both of you and you're just gonna go with it so whether you're still gonna be with that other person or not if it's a romantic relationship or if it's not a romantic relationship and it's just someone you care about but someone with whom you have a lot of karma you have a lot of things unresolved you just you just need to get together and solve it and afterwards things are gonna go it's 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 like it's like imagine this point here where like what's a it's, it's like what's a bursting through through a channel and then just flowing afterward and flowing in one steady direction you know the direction afterwards okay and if, it just feels like you're bottling up and you're just focusing on work focusing on work focusing on work but at some point it feels like there are so many blockages it feels like all these flowers are like blockages to your work evolution because you have to solve this like basically your whole intuition the universe your life your higher self everyone is pushing you to solve this you need to solve this because it will not let you advance in life and you could live your life with this unsolved but why would you do that because it's gonna put a lot of obstacles in your way it's gonna leave you with a lot of frustrations for the rest of your life because you haven't solved it and basically you're just gonna have to solve it in another incarnation so the wise thing to do is just just solve it right now and i feel like you've actually come incarnate to solve it and like you yourself the soul are not letting yourself leave this unsolved and that's why you're basically presenting yourself with so many obstacles in the other areas of your life and like the message is go back keep going back to this until you solve it 
make it clear make it clear for yourself and everyone else involved so i feel like for you this could be the message i feel like i could end the message here because it's it's clear <laughs> okay so let's say you don't know how to solve this let's find out so it's the nine of pentacles <laughs> it's coming right after the eight of pentacles so the knight nine of pentacles talks a lot about being financially independent <sighs> but it's just so interesting how this person in in this card is with you know it's with the back towards us so it's like it's like you're not willing to solve this until you see yourself financially independent this could be the thing okay let's see how this is going but you feel blocked <laughs> listen i just heard something like because remember what i said in the beginning these blockages are actually what's causing the delays in your life so this unsolved situation is actually what's causing all the blockages in all the other areas of your life once it pops open you are allowed to flow more freely in your life like with all other areas of your life because right now this is the call for you to solve this you cannot run away from it anymore maybe you've been running away from it for far too long and right now the universe is pushing you to face this so we've got the five of swords there may be a lot of conflict a lot of inner and even external conflict in some cases but don't be afraid just don't be afraid the message here is don't be afraid there may be a lot of tension but this tension needs to be resolved ten of wands yes you're carrying this you're carrying this to you wherever you go that's why you cannot abandon me so just try to do it feel free to do it just how's about you work a bit on this how's about you practice this a bit just look at yourself in the mirror or put the phone in front of you with some like record yourself how you imagine this whole thing to go on as to as to encourage yourself a little bit to, to face the situation and when you're ready go face it it's not something here to be afraid of actually you will be very very surprised of the outcome of this <laughs> okay i love you my babies face it hello my babies welcome to the reading so you were attracted to this tower card from the tarot deck called spellcaster's tarot sorry modern spellcaster's tarot so um okay i'm gonna put the card back in the deck and shuffle it and uh let's see what messages are coming through for you for your particular situation how you can face it how you can overcome the obstacles and the challenges and why is this thing happening for you okay so uh let's see two cards for how this crisis is like what is it about Okay, so we've got the Seven of Wands and the Page of Cups. Okay. It's like two people looking different ways. But it could be the case that these are not actually two people it's like the same person so it could be you 
looking in two different directions. So basically we have the water element and the fire element here. And uh, it's like you're very proud of something or you want to be very proud of something. But it's like you keep neglecting it. Okay, hold on. So, I feel like you have two moods, two worlds. There's one part of you that wants to go this way and really achieve. Or you might have already achieved something. So there, there could be two groups, two, two types of people here. Those of you who have already achieved something, those of you who want to achieve something, want to get there. And there's this other side of you that's procrastinating, that's just, let's say you're like, I want to do this, I want to be into business, but let's just have one more break, let's just have one more drink, let's just have one more nap you know that kind of attitude and it's not like you necessarily need this rest or this um fun time to recharge it's like you're doing it out of a habit you're doing it it's like because <laughs> look so look at the people there the other two, oh fuck, sorry. Yeah, there's a titty there. Fuck you. <laughs> fuck YouTube. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, never mind. Um. <laughs> uh, these two people here are very surprised that this person is drinking the cup. So, it could be that you're doing something that's very... Oh. So, hold on. This person, this archetype of, is the archetype of someone very creative. So, it could be the case of procrastinating. But it could also be the case of someone very enlightened, someone who knows what they want, and someone who wants to pursue their dreams of being an artist. And it's like you're an ambitious art. Okay. I didn't figure out I would be showing it upside down. Okay, so upside down. Okay, so what I'm getting here is that you're seeing things through a different lens you're seeing things through a different lens because you come from a different world so you're seeing this world from the lens of a different world so you could be a star seed and you're just here to enjoy your life i feel like you're someone who it's very into their senses but at the same time, it feels like in some circumstances, you're basically your own enemy because you're just, so you're a very creative person and someone very innovative, someone very unique and you do see things from a different perspective, but at the same time, it feels like you're just taking too much um leisure leisure time for yourself instead of actually getting to to the business doing the business itself taking the right step oh wait i see it now so the message here is that you're not taking the right steps in the manifested world for achieving your dreams your goals your ambitions but that's because you're not highly grounded. So you're dreaming all day long and it's like you're very idealistic. 
and it's like you come from these worlds where the earth element is not that dense not that solid or you can even come from worlds that don't even have an earth element like there are some dimensions where souls come incarnate as ethereal beings so you could be someone very ethereal or someone very watery someone even tuned to the air element but and even some fire but it's like very little earth if any at all so you're not really grounded in the the steps that you have to take in this world to achieve your dreams it's like you're dreaming all day long you know where you want to be but it's like it's kind of a general overview whereas it's a general overview of the way to get there you know where you want to be but you don't know the steps of how to get there and this is not something wrong because many times we don't know the steps of the way we don't know how to do something but it's like this powerful intuition that you have i just heard listen to it on the full moon so you may be very connected to the moon okay so it's like because the fire element for you is upside down so for you it's not that much of a powerful message of action in, in itself like that type of fiery action very focused action just going ahead and going with one direction knowing where you go it's like it's more of a moony magic somehow it's more like you're still in that space of your life where you're still figuring yourself out so you may not already have all the answers about yourself as a person as a soul as the steps as you know so it's like at this point you may not even be called to take some certain steps as much as take the time to discover yourself a bit more deeply so at this time you could be called to do things such as past life regression meditation like try to see if you can tune into the akashic records try to see if you can tune into your past lives by yourself or even your dreams you may want to have a dream journal or you may try to i'm getting this this may be something very specific for some of you like try to paint something and you know those kind of people who start writing and they channel by writing you may be doing that through painting so start painting something and just let yourself go with the process and i feel like you're very good at that so i feel like your paintings are very symbolic and they resemble a lot dreams and that kind of symbolic world of the subconscious and your paintings actually mean a lot so try to decode them because there may be a lot of messages for you there and a lot of things that will come through intuitively in what you create visually so there's a lot of thing about paintings here visual arts visual stuff and um there's a thing with that kind of you know that kind of hedonistic personality you may not be quite hedonistic but it's just that kind of person person that just enjoys life and that's all they want to do to, to just enjoy life unfortunately this world doesn't really allow for that because at this point you may feel called to or actually even pushed to do some other things and you can't really enjoy your life that much and it's like when you enjoy life the way you want it you shock people so i was about to give you an advice but i felt like let's pull the card for it and it's actually exactly what i had in mind as an advice 
because this is the four of swords and the four of swords is about secluding yourself a little bit going within going i heard going in the cave but i heard it in my mother tongue but it's like i heard it going in peshtera which is in the cave so that may be significant for some of you okay if i heard it like that okay <laughs> so maybe some other lives you've done that kind of meditation there's a meditation practice that happens in a cave so you might have been doing that in other lives okay so you may feel called to retrieve those memories and it's interesting that i used the word retrieve some of you may also feel called to have a soul retrieval and it it may sound very weird for some people but it's like for some of you it's very specific like you're gonna have a soul retrieval in a cave or there's something with a cave so apply it as it resonates and i just heard that thing you know like when when you're in a cave and there's a powerful echo that thing may be very specific very symbolic for some of you very meaningful so <laughs> okay so four of swords yes go with it because this is the thing as long as you are yourself surrounded by those people you're gonna shock them you're very unique so in some cases for your own sake it may be better to keep yourself for yourself in a way i'm not saying to censor yourself i'm not saying to stop being yourself but it's like keep doing the things you do but make sure you're not doing them for shock value or just make sure that you keep a low profile when you are surrounded by people who could have that kind of Who could try to stop you? You know, because unfortunately in this world, when um, when we're doing very good, very well, there may be people who, out of hate and envy, they will try to bring you down. And I feel like for you it's not really applicable because they can't. Because look at you, you're above them anyways. But it's like you're out in the open and all of your magic is being poured into all of those pleasurable activities of this manifested world whereas you haven't been spending enough time in the pleasurable activities of the more non-physical side of you and there's a call back to that at this point so if you're going through a crisis at this point it may be because you don't know yourself already yet like the full scope of who you are and there may be a lot of hidden information about yourself in the depths of your being so there's the message here of going that way this is powerful i it's like 
you see how these dogs are here it's like how your spirit guides are with you okay so i was getting this message of people here but this could also be your spirit guides being like stop drinking your time away stop wasting your time with all of those illusionary things and activities some of you may even find um some of you may even try to escape through sex sexual activities it could even be porn so um okay so for those of you who are guys this is coming strongly so if you're watching porn so the, the message with activities such as drinking and wasting your life like that this could be for everyone but specifically for guys and okay if you're a woman and you watch porn okay that's weird <laughs> i don't know of, I, I don't know if there are women <laughs> who watch porn but okay um i actually heard one girl saying that she watches porn like guys do but she was a lesbian so <laughs> stop indul this is the word indulging stop indulging yourself stop over indulging yourself in things that are basically not constructive for your soul growth because this is what you came here for for soul growth and it's like your spirit guides are here like whenever you do those things like escapism your spirit guides are like hey like like these people with like raising their hands at you being like hey we're here stop doing that listen please listen to us come with us so it's it's like because you're wasting your energy with all of this and keeping your chakras blocked with all of this and your chakra flow you know you're not capable of really being in this mood and really being the achiever and the go-getter and really being in that fiery energy of knowing what you want being there following that path you're kind of like wasting yourself in all of those indulging activities and it's like you're spreading yourself all over so that's why you're not in this fiery mood where like you so basically okay if you're not a guy apply it as it resonates but i'm getting this visual this this allegory for guys like okay so you're wasting your sex energy your seed your sexual energy with all of those illusionary stuff all that Ill illusionary stuff of the porn world which is fake and that's why you cannot actually go there and achieve what you want in this world because your whole fiery energy so yeah you can look at that wand like like the the dick like a hard dick <laughs> because it is the symbol of masculinity it, it, it is the symbol of testosterone and really using masculine energy for something because masculine energy what does masculine energy do through sex plants the seed gives the seed it's the boom energy so you're wasting it you're wasting energy directly from your lower chakras and all of this energy you could use it to actually achieve you could use it to manifest you could use it to follow your goals and your dreams and really put them in practice in action so you may not 
go the full earthy way with all that planned added like with, with all that attitude of having specific plans for the future if you don't feel that cold to the earth element you may not go that way but you may be called to go to this fire element of taking action that is not necessarily planned but inspired you just know hold on i am uh... okay i heard uh, i heard someone on the hallway thing is that it's a bit late at night and uh I'm not living alone, so I thought uh, maybe they were bothered because I'm speaking. <laughs> okay, so um, the Four of Swords. The Four of Swords is a card of pulling back, going into your intimacy, going in your cave, and manifesting there, meditating there, discovering yourself there, and especially if you're a guy like this world wants guys to be to have their energy spread all over the place like literally their sexual energy spread all over the place they want this world wants guys to go that way of wanting to have sex with this woman and this other woman and this other woman and basically give your seed in all of those places spread it all over and just waste it when in fact you could actually store that energy for yourself to manifest the world you desire for yourself so uh, watch out <laughs> okay this has been the reading I love you and be powerful, be powerful enough to discipline yourself.